All right, so let's talk about the next two trends. If you know atomic size, you can predict every other trend that I'm going to give you. And there are three of them. I'm going to give you two. Actually, I'm going to give you three. We have a double. So you'll actually get all three of these today. Not at once. I'll take a break in between, go over the test, and do that stuff. But I am going to go over two of them anyway. Take a look. The next one's called metallic character. i got to explain to you what I mean by metallic character. You guys all have your own vision of what makes something a metal. All right. How would you recognize a metal walking down the street? It's solid. It's, I, people always say that. It's solid. That's not really a you know, wood solid, but it's not a metal. Something distinct about a metal. It's shiny. That's, the, that's kind of like a, uh, that's a biggie. What, what else? Well, that's the same thing. Luster and shiny, the same thing. What else? What's that? Not always magnetic, but they do do something. What do they do? I was going to say, like, if you hit them, they make, like, a pinging sound. Well, that's true, too. But notice this guy illustrates it, too. Besides the fact that he's shiny, notice he's bent. I can't do that to most things. All right? Most things would break first. So it's malleable. Remember the word malleable? You ever hear that word? Malleable, and it's shiny. And what else? Do, why, do we use, why do we use metals for pots and pans? What do they do? I they throw them out. No, that, that, but, but Marvin's got it, what I was looking for. They are good conductors of heat and electricity. Did you all hear that? Okay. Unfortunately, <clears throat> that doesn't really tell me what makes something a metal. What really makes something a metal, those are the properties of metal because of the metallic bond, which we will discuss and go over next chapter. What makes something a metal, the only thing I care about that makes something a metal is one thing, and that is whether he loses or gains electrons when he forms a bond. You see, everybody wants, remember the octet rule? What does everybody want? Everybody wants an octet, right? Remember that? I just mentioned it briefly last chapter. The octet rule, everybody wants to be like the group eight elements over there. Well, to become like those guys, sometimes when people get together, they gain electrons, and sometimes they lose them. Let's take a look at these periodic table elements. Like, look at this guy here. Fluorine. Look how close he is to having an octet, right? He's this close. He can taste it. If he gets one more electron, he'll be like neon. Everybody in this group has eight, right? Now, these guys over here, they're just hungry for electrons. All they need to do is gain one. Look at these guys over here. What would sodium need to do to get uh, to be like uh, argon? He'd have to gain how many electrons? Seven. You think that's likely? No. But what could sodium do? To also drop him, what would happen to become like neon? He could lose one. That's exactly what happens. You see, when bonds are formed, that's what we're going to be talking. Whole chapters are going to be about how bonds are formed. When you put two guys together, sometimes one guy loses and one guy gains electrons. Okay, a, met a metal is a guy who loses electrons. He is a guy who tends to lose electrons fairly easily when forming a compound. That's what really makes something a metal. Now, having explained that, I want to see if you can help me predict what's going to happen, where you're going to find your best metals and your worst metals. Who's going to lose electrons the easiest in the periodic table based on where they are within a group and where they are within a period? Let's start within a group. By the way, if you're already not noticing this, every single one of your trends is going to have the same two things underneath it. Group, what it happens within a group from top to bottom, what happens within a trend, what happens within the period from uh, left to right. So, within a group from top to bottom, let's see what happens here. Let's see if we can't predict this. Okay, let's look at the periodic table. Ready? All right, look. Here's your periodic table. Ah, no, no, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. Okay, you looked anyway, but that's all right. Um, Let's take a look here. Here's your periodic table, right? I hope I have, yeah. Um, as I go down a group, look what happens. What do we know what happens to the sides of the atom as we go down a group? What happens to the sides? It increases, right? Because here's hydrogen up here. He only has one electron. He only has one energy level. There he is. Very small. Now, you get down here to francium. What does he have? 
He's in the seven. He has seven energy levels, doesn't he? He's in the seventh period. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's much bigger. And here's this outer shell electron out there. He has how many electrons in his outer shell for francium? One. And there's one for hydrogen as well. So his guy has one electron, and he has one electron in his outer shell. Those are the guys who are generally lost, by the way, which is no surprise. My question to you is very simple. As I go down a group, do you think it's going to get easier or harder to remove that outer shell electron? What do you think? Everybody agree it's easier? I'd say it's easier. Look at how much, what's holding that guy in there? The positive charge in the nucleus. Here's your positive nucleus there, right there, right? Here's your positive nucleus right there. He's right next to it. He only has one electron. He ain't giving it up. This guy down here, he's got lots of electrons really far away, okay? This outer shell electron. It'd be a little bit easier, I would think, to remove that guy, right? So as I go down a group, I don't think it's any real surprise what happens. I'm using the atomic size to help me predict that as I go down a group from top to bottom, metallic character is going to increase. You're going to get better metals as you go down the group due to the fact that the electrons are further from the nucleus, increasing atomic size. But notice there's something else. Remember I told you there's going to be really three concepts. One was atomic size. If you know what happens with atomic size, that will help you predict everything. But there are two other concepts you're going to have to understand. All right? This next part of the explanation, I need to go back to this again and look at that same picture. Okay? Not only, this is something you don't know, not only is this, these elect, are these electrons closer to the nucleus here than they are down here? I assume I had seven there. Not only are this electron out here further away, what else is in between that nucleus and this outer shell electron? All of this stuff, all these other negative electrons. They kind of block him from the pull of the nucleus. They're going to soak up some of that charge, right? So not only is this guy physically further away, he's also blocked or shielded from the full pull of the nucleus. And every time you go down to another energy level, you're adding more electrons in between. So you're increasing that shielding that this outer electron experiences. He is not held as tightly for that reason as well. So we call that the shielding effect. It's a decrease in the nuclear attraction for the outer shell electrons because of the inner shell soaking up all that charge. So shielding effect is another one of those things. Oops, sorry. It's coming back. Shielding effect is the, is the uh, second concept you kind of have to understand and help to explain these other trends. It's going to pop its head up all uh, more, you know, in more places here. If you know atomic size, and if you know shielding effect, and if you know one more thing, you can predict all four trends, all eight ways they change, and all 16 reasons why. Just using three of these concepts. OK? All right, you got that copy? All right. So that's what happens within a group to metals. You get better metals as you go down a group. Let's see what happens within a period to metals. Within a period, what would you predict is going to happen? Think about my periodic table. Think about what it looks like. As you go across the periodic table, what's happening to atomic size? Use atomic size to predict it. What's happening to atomic size as you go across a period from left to right? It's getting smaller. 
right? Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. So what would you predict? You're going to get easier or harder to remove electrons? Harder. harder, which would make a better or a worse metal. Worse. Okay, good. Look it. Watch again. Don't, don't obviously, just wait until I show you this. All right. As I go across, all right, I've got potassium over here, who's this size, say, and I've got bromine over here, <laughs> who's about half his size. The electrons, as you go across, are much further away than they are here. About, about half the distance over there. So it's going to be harder to remove that guy's electron. We explained why this happened yesterday, remember? As you go across, I think who told us about it? Uh, Emily just said in the beginning. She explained that you get a stronger magnetic pull as you go across because you got more protons and more electrons, filling up the same basic energy level. All right, so that makes complete sense. But there's another reason, and I'm going to talk about that first for, in a second. It decreases due to one reason would be De decreasing atomic size. You can say that. But what's the other reason? This is the third concept you kind of have to understand to be able to predict all 16 things that I might ask you. Why else might you think, let's go back again, why else might you think it's going to be harder to, I said it a little while ago, why else might you think it's going to be harder to remove an electron from bromine than it is from potassium. Forget about its size. What else? Because if you just add an electron, it would be turned So basically, you're telling me bromine would like to gain an electron, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. As I go across, you're getting closer and closer to having an octet, aren't you? You remember those little people you made with the smiles? You didn't know what the smiles meant, did you? Well, now you do. You know those smiles meant how close he was to having an octet. And bromine so close he could taste it. And as you get closer and closer, you got more and more smiles, remember? The guy who's got the biggest smile was going to be a guy in group 8 because they're done. They're happy. They've got exactly what they want. Guys over here, it doesn't really matter. If he loses an electron, it's not going to hurt him much. As a matter of fact, it'll help him. He'll drop down and become like argon. All right? So basically, as I go across, there are two reasons. It do, decreases due to the decreasing atomic size and something called the octet rule, which we already talked about briefly in the last chapter. Just kind of mentioned it, but didn't really do a lot with it. I told you this chapter we do a lot with it, and we are. And in the next chapter, we will again. It doesn't go away. Octet rule is one of those concepts you're going to use to write any compound down, to write the formula for them correctly. Everybody wants an octet. Everybody wants a filled outer shell. To get that, he's got to either gain or lose electrons. As I go across, I'm getting closer to that octet. I have a more, more of a chance of gaining and less of a chance of losing electrons. That makes just makes sense. So that's your other concept. Okay? That's the other guy you need to know. That's the other guy. You need to know. If I know the octet rule, shielding effect, and atomic size, I can predict everybody, as I just predicted this guy. Watch. I love doing this, although I picked on somebody last period. Hopefully, I won't have to pick on anybody this period. I am not going to give you the next two boards of notes. You're going to tell me exactly the next slide that's going to come up each time, the next word that's going to come up. You're going to tell me. All I have to do is define for you what electronegativity is. And you will be able to tell me all the notes on electronegativity. Watch. It will not be me teaching. It will be you telling me what's going to slide up here. You could have made this PowerPoint up. The only way that's going to work is if you're thinking and not just waiting for that answer to come. Using your prior knowledge, those three concepts will predict all of this. Let's see. Well, you do need one piece of information before we can do that. I have to give you this. I have to tell you what electronegativity is. Electronegativity is the attraction of an atom for electrons. That's all it means. Okay? It's the attraction of an atom for electrons. Generally, I'm going to expand on that definition in the next chapter. But for now, that's all you have to know. How much an atom attracts electrons? How strong is the attraction for, for electrons in an atom? So... Here's my question. 
what's the net when I touch this board, what's the next thing that's going to slide up there? Group. Absolutely. Within a group. See, if you're thinking, if you're following along with me, you know the next thing that's going to come up there is group. Because I'm going to ask you what happens. And you're going to, what are the next words going to say? I don't want the reason, just what they're going to say. What are the next words going to say? Raise your hand. What do you think? The exact words you think I'm going to write. They're going to, not, well, like, um, what exactly is going to come up here? From top to bottom, it increases. From top to bottom, the electronegativity does what? Use, your, use the atomic size as a guide. As you go down, what happens to atomic size? It decreases. It, what, what happens to atomic size? Oh, it, it increases. So would you expect those electrons that are in the outer shells out there are going to be as strongly held? Is going to be as strong an attraction for them? So what happens? So from top to bottom, it does what? It decreases. Decreases. You get less of an attraction. So that's the next thing that comes up. Oh, I forgot to ask you. Uh, oh, don't, don't look. I don't. It decreases. I should have broken that up into two parts, but I didn't. It decreases. Why? What are the two reasons it decreases? What are the two reasons it decreases? The next words, the next sentence that comes out, the next part of the sentence that comes out of there. Due to. Due to what? The, um, two reasons. Look back in your notes. Think there are two reasons. That will be one. But what would the first one I'll probably write down? What about it? The increasing atomic radius, the increasing atomic size, and the... Uh, Exactly. There it is. The exact sense. From top to bottom, it decreases due to increasing atomic size and the shielding effect. Basically, that's the exact same phrase you wrote down a minute ago to answer why you had your best metals at the bottom, why the electrons weren't being attracted as well. Because that's the, it's the other side of the coin. Do you all get that? It's the other, electronegativity is the other side of the coin for um, metallic character. Metallic character says, who wants to lose an electron? Electric activity says, who wants to gain an electron? So what's going to happen to each of these? They're going to be opposite, right? Just makes sense. All right. What's the next word that's going to come up here, um, Olivia? I mean, Olivia. Um, Ellie. Uh, period. Within a period. Now, once again, give me the entire phrase now. Matter of fact, write it yourself. Write it yourself right now. See if you do it right. Because how hard can it be? Seriously. You know exactly what I'm going to write. Do it. All right, let's see if Emily's got the exact wording. Go for it. From left to right, it increases due to the decreasing atomic size and the octet rule. Woo! Look at that. Yes. See, that's called Emily thinking. Two, that's called thinking. One. Isn't that great? That is exactly uh, what you need to do all the time. Because here's the deal, guys. Let me explain to you now that we've got three of them now. We have one more to do in the next period. I'm not going to do it now. But let me explain to you why this makes more sense. If I just apply those three things, if I know how the atomic size changes, you know, if I know how the atomic size changes down a group, now, that's amazing. See, I hit the button and then, if I know how it changes down a group, and I know how it changes across a period, and I know what shielding effect and octet rule are. If I know those three things, the atomic size, how it changes, shielding effect, and octet rule, I can predict all four trends. Three things. Instead of, here's what some of you want to do. Okay, it was A, B, C, D. Electronegativity was C. Within group, uh, increase or decrease. Atomic size, shit like that. It, it, it's stupid. It doesn't make any sense to do that. All right? Because there's so much more to memorize that way. Like I said, about 16 things to memorize that way. When all you really have to do is understand three and be able to apply them. That's the difference. All right. Now, uh, oh, before I... 
Um, so I want to show you real quickly. I can graph these as well. If I hit the button, okay? Let's ask some questions on this, okay? First off, what does A correspond to, real quickly? What is A? Where are these guys here in the periodic table? What's that? Period what? Not one, period two, right? And B would be period three, right? What element is this guy right here? Everybody see why he has to be beryllium? Okay, he has to be beryllium because he is, here's two, three, four. That'd be four. Element four is beryllium. What element is Y here? Well, you know this guy right here next to him is 18, right? What do you think Y is? 17, which makes him chlorine. Okay. Now, what does this trend do? Within a period, what does he do? Within a period, from left to right, what does he do? Increases. This is a period. We all agree a minute ago that's a period. This guy increases, correct? What does he do within a group? From top to bottom, he's decreasing. You see it? You're going to see these and have to be able to identify these on the, every worksheet I give you and on the test. Guaranteed. And I'm going to do at least one or two of these every period we have class for the next week. All right. Um, finally, what trend must this be? Now it's not so easy. See, I came in, I did one of them a minute ago. It was just it was, all we had was atomic size. Now we've got three, and we're going to get four. We've got to be able to tell them apart. Which trend is this? Which trend, what do you say? Electro. Electronegativity. It's electronegativity because... That's the guy who increases as you go across the period. Does atomic size increase you go across the period? No, it gets smaller. It decreases, right? And this guy decreases as you go down a group. You get less attraction as you go down a group in the periodic table because these guys are bigger. They're not going to hold electrons as well, right? All right, good enough. Now, 